Arab and Muslim Americans are gaining ground in U.S. politics. In last year's general election, more than 60 Muslim American candidates won their respective elections. And in last week's vote in Michigan's Detroit area, they swept the municipal races. I spoke to Dearborn's first Arab American and Muslim Mayor Abdullah Hamoud about his historic win and the changing landscape of U.S. politics. This is One on One. Abdullah Hamoud, thanks for being with us. Of course, thank you so much for having me. Your election as Dearborn's first Arab American and Muslim mayor made headlines all around the world. How surprised are you that your victory made international waves? Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's humbling. I just ran to be mayor of my hometown and it happens to be celebrated, you know, in, in, in places all around the world. It's humbling. Um, and I hope that it's an experience that many can maybe, uh, maybe that it inspires others to run for office back in their hometowns as well, all across the globe. Interestingly enough, despite being the city with the largest concentration of Arab Americans in the United States, Dearborn actually has never had an Arab American or Muslim mayor. How big of a deal is your victory for the Arab community in Michigan and indeed the rest of the country? You know, I think it is very important and it demonstrates to the community that representation matters. Um, but what's more important than being the first, because we never ran on trying to be the first, we ran on trying to be the best. And so we have to demonstrate that Arab Americans or Muslim Americans can do as good a job, if not better, um, than other individuals. So you need not change who you are in order to try to give back to the community that you love. Yeah, interestingly enough, you say you uh, do not need to change who you are. It's my understanding you previously served as a, an official a state representative in Michigan, of course. It's my understanding you were asked to change your name or it was suggested that you change your name before running back then. Is that true? It is true. Um, it was actually approached to me by members of the Muslim community who suggested that maybe the name Abdullah is too difficult to become, uh, to get elected. And if I change my name to Abe, it might be a little bit easier um, to get through an election and through public office. But we were steadfast that Abdullah is as American as any other name, that you can be who you are. You can pronounce your name proudly. You don't need to change the, you know, your faith or any component of your identity in order to pursue public office and be successful. Well, you certainly proved that, that the name Abdullah Hamoud gets you elected. Uh, nonetheless, you are the son of Lebanese immigrants whose parents, I understand, initially struggled in low-wage jobs when they first came to the United States. What message does your win send to Arab Americans and Muslim Americans? Um, that uh, hard work trumps all, that, you know, family, um, uh, that, the working, that, that the working poor struggle, the struggle of immigrants, which is a, a struggle for, for many all throughout Dearborn and all throughout the country, um, it's a story that we should embrace. And the success story of me becoming a mayor is not an Arab success story, it's not a Muslim success story, it's an American success, success story. And it's something that we should all be proud of. It's an, it's an American sex, success story, you say, but it also has to be noted, of course, that Muslim and Arab Americans had to counter and fight and endure negative stereotypes, particularly post 9-11. President Trump didn't help by imposing a Muslim ban right after he took office. Do you see your election as a sign of progress, not just in Dearborn, but also the United States? It certainly is a sign of progress. It demonstrates that he, that we here in Dearborn elect individuals based on the direction in which they lead, no matter the direction in which they pray. Um, and we also heard of several success stories from all across the country. And I think all of those are examples uh, of progress. You are, of course, an epidemiologist by trade. Why did you decide to go into politics? Why did you run for office in the first place? I strongly believe that policy is a lever for change, but no one who looked like me, who had a name like me uh, or a faith like me had a finger on that lever. And representation, as I said earlier, is extremely important. So when the opportunity presented itself, we said, why not step forward, try to give back to the community that provided my family and I with everything. Um, and that's you know, what sparked our initial run. Interestingly enough, your election might be part of a more general trend, of a wider trend. In last year's general election, over 60 Muslim American candidates won their respective elections. How do you explain this? How do you explain this? Why are Muslim Americans, Arab Americans making ground in U.S. politics? I think we're realizing that we no longer sit on the sideline. 
when you had a president like Trump or other elected officials who are trying to dictate uh, what happens to Muslim Americans or vilifying us in the media, um, we realize that we have to step forward and speak to our own narrative, that we have to run for public office, that we have to be in every as, uh, facet of American society, that simply being doctors, engineers, or lawyers is no longer sufficient, which is the dreams of our parents. As we become more established, in, established here and generations begin to grow, we can now become the news anchors. We can be the historians and the professors. We can run for public office, and we can run the, the political campaigns for other candidates. And so, it's extremely important to be in those positions. It's extremely important to be in the midst of it and not just stay on the sidelines. That seems to be true for a lot of minorities these days in the U.S. Minorities, for instance, one in cities which are traditionally led by white politicians, such as in Boston or Cincinnati, so you think, do you think that your re election and the election of your peers, both in Boston and Cincinnati, reflect the demographic changes that are taking place in the United States? Is this a trend that will uphold? I believe it is a trend that will uphold. I believe it does represent the demographic changes uh, that are occurring all throughout the country. But I also believe it's a demonstration of the progress that America is making, um, the ability for minority candidates who are as qualified as any other to step forward uh, and run for office and be successful, not without our own obstacles. Certainly minority candidates have to spend more money. They might have to look a little bit harder on the campaign trail just to prove that they're as good uh, as a non-minority candidate. Um, but that's just the reality of our world. And I think the success is in being the first. It's in demonstrating that you can achieve that first, do such a great job in that role that you're not the last. And you're saying uh, this doesn't come without uh, obstacles, of course, and hurdles to overcome. One specific example is Republicans are currently boycotting a hearing for Dilawar Saeed, President Biden's nominee for Deputy Administrator of the Small Business Administration. If confirmed, Saeed, a Pakistani American, would be the highest ranking Muslim official in the U.S. federal government. So clearly this is an example that it's not all rosy, that there are still many obstacles to overcome, no? We, you know, the most radical thing there is is willful ignorance. It's people who might not understand a community or a culture and rather than ask questions, begin to try to target or perpetuate some misconceived notion about who they are. Um, and so certainly uh, the world is not perfect here um, or anywhere, um, but certainly we, we, we demonstrated that there are signs of progress over this last week. You were born and raised in Dearborn, as a matter of fact. Previously, as we say, you served as the city's representative in the Michigan House of representatives. It has to be said that Dearborn has a long history of racial segregation and racist politicians for that matter. Was your background or faith ever an issue during the campaign? It wasn't necessarily my background or faith, but it was this idea that a Arab Muslim candidate would only be the mayor for the Arab and Muslim community. That I, as a Arab Muslim, could not possibly be a mayor for the entirety of the city. And that was the stereotype that we had to combat. That in fact, I was a mayor for all. I am a very qualified candidate who just happens to be Muslim and Arab, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so that was you know, the dog whistle that was used during this campaign, as they say, and we pushed back, we combated it. And I think we demonstrated that we won support not only from the Arab and Muslim community, but we also won from the non-Arab and the non-Muslim community. And that's why we were successful. What has been the reaction uh, on the part of Arab and Muslim Americans, not just in Dearborn, but the entire state of Michigan and the U.S.? How many people have reached out to you? You must be a source of pride and joy there. <laughs> it's, um, it's honestly humbling. I'm receiving calls from, you know, the village of my parents in, uh, in Lebanon. I'm receiving calls from family and friends all over the country and, and, and folks who I've worked with overseas. Um, it's, um, people are inspired. They're hopeful. Uh, they believe it's a great underdog story, as they say. Um, but I just hope that what it does is it emboldens people to stay true to who they are, to be unforgiving in your identity, and know that it will lead you to places uh, that you can never imagine. Does your success story also prove that the American dream is uh, still intact? I think the American dream, um, you know, it, it is still intact, but not without its issues. Um, there is a long way to go before the American dream is something that each and every single American can realize. We have many an obstacle, uh, especially for minorities all across the country. And those are the challenges that we're hopefully pursuing public office and other aspects of society to try to rise up and meet the occasion to address those issues and make it easier, if not for our families today, at least for the next generation to come. Of course, being the first means nothing 
if you're not uh, delivering the goods, uh, as you said, it's not important to be the first, it's important to be the best. And you, of course, will be measured by the work that you will provide. You will take office as mayor in a couple of months in January. What are some of the pressing issues that you intend to tackle first? Well, this summer in Dearborn, Michigan, we experienced catastrophic flooding. We have about 35,000 homes, of which nearly 20,000 experience flooding to some degree. So that's a major issue. There's a clock on the wall, and when the next heavy rain sets, that will lead to another catastrophic flooding event. So we have to address our crumbling infrastructure, create retention basins and rain gardens. Another major issue is actually speeding and reckless driving. Um, sounds silly, but it's an issue that actually uh, terrorizes the streets of our neighborhoods all throughout Southeast Michigan. Um, just yesterday, unfortunately, we lost a six-year-old girl who was um, hit by a car. Uh, that was a hit and run, and they took off. Um, so that is a very serious issue that we need to combat and tackle on day one as well. Um, and then lastly, I would like to speak to the public health and the air quality in the area. Dearborn is home to one of the most polluted zip codes in the entirety of the state of Michigan, where asthma rates are two to four times higher than the average in the state of Michigan. And so those are issues that we also have to address, pushing back against some of the corporate polluters. What would you say to young uh, Arab Muslims, uh, Muslim Americans, Arab Americans that are coming to you for whom you are a source of uh, inspiration and uh, pride and say, I want to go the way you're going. I want to uh, embark on the path that you have. What, what, what advice would you dispense? One, I say, you know, dream bigger than even myself. Uh, because inshallah, we, you know, the work that we've done, the foundation that we've laid will only allow this, you know, this younger generation to, to reach newer heights. Um, be proud of your name. Be proud of your faith. Uh, we never have to shy away from who we are in order for us to achieve success. Um, because as, as it said in the Quran, you know, uh, they plan, he plans, but he is the ultimate of planners. And as long as we have that belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is there uh, and he is our safety net, um, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. And you're only 31 years old, so the sky is the limit. Who knows what the next steps are? Thank you so much. I think for now, uh, we're comfortable where we are, trying to give back to our hometown. And as I said earlier, whatever is next, we will follow. Abdullah Hamoud, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.